everyone, it's Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. I thought I would go ahead and start a new vlog where I am finishing Tome, my second draft of it at least. I always kind of like to at least document the beginning of starting a draft and the end of starting a draft. The, the murky middle is just, you know, never that fun. So yes, I am four chapters out from finishing, three in the actual book and then I have an epilogue. And the chapter that I'm currently on is my climax chapter. So I thought it would be fun to go from the climax to the resolving incidences or the denouement, whatever you wanna call it, uh, and then wrap it all up. Obviously my climax chapter has a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts. It's a big boy and it's gonna take a lot of work. But I really wanna finish this week I want to try to finish this week, if not like early next week. That's what I really want. If you're new here, hello, my name's Lindsay. I have a two book deal with Scholastic and the first book in the, in the contract, The Glass Witch is coming out October 18th of this year. You can pre-order it down below. And I am working on the second book in the contract, which I'm currently calling Tobe as a placeholder title. And it is a spooky middle grade, just like my first one, about a disabled female Draco Malfoy on a treasure hunt in a fancy place <laughs> that I can't really talk about because it's, it's it's a very secret secret thing right now my publisher wants to keep me on the keep it on the down low because it's really fun and <laughs> the way he just flopped <laughs> but it's really fun and commercial the secret thing the secret spice the secret sauce of Tobe is just very very me. Once it's revealed, you'll completely understand. For those of you who don't know, uh, my I draft very sparse in the beginning, and right now I'm on my second draft where I'm basically just fleshing out the entire story. I'm not writing it in very pretty prose or uh, worrying about the fact that some of the characters don't have names yet or just I have placeholders But my job of my second draft is to go through and fill in as many of those placeholders as possible and get the entire story written out so that way in my third draft, I can go in, you know, after revising it and making sure <laughs> everything's where it needs to be. Uh, you know, I do that in a read through, taking notes while I read through and then I would be applying them. But my third draft, when I do all of this, uh, I also go through and make it pretty so it actually reads like a book, like something someone else could read. That is what I plan on sending to my critique partner and my agent. And then hopefully sometime in April or May, I will get their notes and make it even prettier. <laughs> in a fourth draft and then it's gonna go to tiffany my editor and uh she is going to make it perfect <laughs> so yeah i don't know how long this vlog is gonna last hopefully just a week but i don't really have that much else going on besides like you know my normal health stuff that might disappear for a couple days and then come back it's fine my camera is shaking because my dogs are behind you like play fighting gotta go <laughs> Hello, good morning everyone. I realized I never updated you on my progress last night, so I thought I would go ahead and do that. I ended up writing 880 words, which I'm okay with. I wish I would have done more, but it's fine. I had a good time. I've been re-watching the Bridgerton series, like, you know, getting ready for season two. So I was doing a 15 minute sprint before an episode, and then one in the middle of an episode, and then, you know, I'd go to the next one. And it helped out a lot, you know? I got 880 more words than I would have otherwise, so. But I also have been doing a lot of non-writing workish stuff throughout the day. Basically, it's a lot of research right now for how to best market my book, things just to do. Like, my, my publisher is gonna be doing the majority of the work, but, you know, if I can move the needle in any little way, I like, I'd like to. So I've just been researching, taking notes, um, planning little fun things that I can do closer to release date, you know. And that's honestly how I've been spending most of my mornings and how I'm gonna be spending this morning. My husband just recently moved to second shift, so he's going in at three and getting off at 11. So in the mornings while he's here, I'm doing my research and my planning and things like that, my administrative tasks, basically. And then after he leaves in the afternoon, that's when I'm doing all of my writing. I also just got like a surprise email, which was really cool. Um, I'm getting my arcs in. 
and not only am I getting them in, I'm getting them in tomorrow. <laughs> like tomorrow, like I got my tracking number and I immediately clicked on it and it was like arriving tomorrow by 7 p.m. And I was like, okay, okay. Like I'm gonna be holding, I'm gonna be holding her tomorrow. Like she's, she's gonna be real. She's, she's gonna be right here, right here. Th this is gonna be her. update um i just realized as i'm sitting here working on the climax that i need to add more <laughs> i need to add more to it uh, when i was originally outlining this and when i did my first draft i knew that what i had here was a little bit simple and like i don't know underdeveloped <laughs> i just know that like if i was a reader and this was the climax that i got in like a finished book i would have been like Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so um i knew i was always going to add more to it but now draft two Lindsay figured out what she was going to do to make it a little bit more complex so it's not adding a lot more like it's not like a new scene or anything i'm just giving my main character more to do in the scene than she's already doing i really like that too because it is connecting i think my character arc more strongly as well because I try to do this thing in every novel where I have the character arc resolving right at the plot climax. So it's just like, mm -mm, like one, two punch, just like really powerful, right? So um, I think that this is just going to like interweave the two even tighter together and have more of a punch. And yeah, I hope, I hope it turns out good. I'm at this point in the book where I'm like, I think it's going to be good but i don't know if anyone else will <laughs> good morning everyone i just woke up don't look at my room it's a mess i just checked my tracking number and my arcs are out for delivery oh my gosh i don't know what i'm gonna do like i want to film it but i also like don't want to be worrying about the camera you know what i mean like this is a big moment and i want to fully enjoy it and fully be in the moment and if i'm worried about like shots and lighting and <laughs> things like that i'm afraid it's gonna pull me out so I have not decided what I want to do yet. I don't know if they're going to happen while Brian's still home. I'm hoping they get here while he's here so he can like experience it. Anyways, last night I only wrote 500 and something words. Um, that's because I watched the fifth episode of Bridgerton and I just kind of got obsessed with it. And like at that point, I repeatedly watched that I Burn For You TikTok like 60 or 70 times. Um, and it became my whole personality all over again. There's a UPS Ooh. truck outside. And that is a very large box. That is a very large box. Oh, I'm so creepy right now. I don't even care. Pew, 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 pew. This <laughs> is heavy. It says Scholastic Inc. Oh my god. Those are my books. My books are in there. My books are in there. My books are in there. <gasps> Where are you going? <laughs> Everyone. I wanted to take a quick break from writing because I got some very exciting book mail in. So I thought we could take a moment to do a quick little book haul. Oh my gosh! Well, the first thing I got in is A Forgery of Roses, my pre-order from Jessica S. Olsen. Oh my gosh. I got so many fun goodies from her. Ooh, it feels so good. I love the pages. It's one of those weird things you start to notice now that you're going to be a published author. Like you start noticing like the viscosity of the pages. But this is like a YA murder mystery romance type situation with some magic. I'm excited for it. Um, some of the goodies that I got through the pre-order is a signed book plate, some really cool character prints, 
and this very high quality bookmark. It's one of those like soft touch ones. Mm, love it. And then one of the funnest thing is because it's kind of like a clue murder mystery type vibe, um, she gives you suspect cards. So it's like, is it the maid? Is it the cook? Is it the lady of the house? I'm so excited for Jessica. She's such a nice person. If you guys think this sounds interesting at all, please pick it up and support her. She's amazing. Also her debut, Sing Me Forgotten, was like one of my favorite books of last year. I just finished this book and I loved it so much. It's Over the Moon by Natalie Lloyd, my queen. I just listened to the audiobook of this. You guys will be hearing about it in my, uh, what month is it? March wrap up. I don't want to spend too much time talking about like the synopsis of the books and stuff, but this is her first like high fantasy about a little girl who bonds with this magical flying horse and discovers to question authority. Amazing. Then we have this very weird package. Am I supposed to like rip it in half? <laughs> I'm like scared Chauncey. <laughs> I got the second and third book in the Problem Children series, again, by Her Majesty, Natalie Lloyd. I read the first book in the Problem Children series this month, again, so good. And I had to get the rest physically to own and I'm actually gonna have to physically read these whereas I listened to the first one on audio because my library doesn't have the audiobook it's a shame because I love the narrators that she gets but I'm so excited to dive into these these are really fun it's about a group of like seven kids um who go live in their grandpa's house and he was like uh, he had like a, a funky house with like staircases that led to nothing and like doors that opened to other places and it's just it's a fun time, it's like a puzzle house. So I got some new books and I'm really excited about it. I mean, I guess I have to get back to writing though. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually no, just kidding. Let me procrastinate a little bit more and tell you about where I'm at with my climax and the whole situation right now. So I did something really fun just for myself, like literally nobody is even gonna understand. I talked to my CP who knows the most about this book, but even her, she was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Um, you guys remember when I made that video talking about like my projects that I have planned for in the future? This really rather hurts. Chauncey. You're being kicked out! All of you! Huzzah! I talked about this book that I have planned for my option that I'm gonna send to Scholastic. My option is basically the book that I'm sending to them after my contract is fulfilled. So they're getting The Glass Witch and Tobe. That's my contract. But we have a clause in there that they see the next middle grade book I write. That's the option. And that's Sob or what I'm calling, uh, because I had Tobe, T-O-B, and then I have Sob, S-O-B. Sob just sounds better than S-O-B. <laughs> but that stands for Secret Organization Book. I've kind of mentioned it, I'm gonna get better comp titles later, but I've kind of mentioned the plot feels a little similar to Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, where there's just like two characters, a boy and a girl, one's from upper society, one's from lower society. Um, he's getting into an organization and she's infiltrating the organization and they butt heads, but then they have to team up. It's like a whole thing. But I did this thing, I just decided to, it just kind of happened, I didn't plan it. Um, I <laughs> put some Easter eggs to Sob in Tobe and there's a character uh, that shows up <laughs> who's gonna also show up in Sob oh, and it, it meant literally nothing. It will mean nothing to no one else but I just, it makes me very happy. finished my book and I didn't tell you <laughs> it just happened so fast honestly what happened was when I hit chapter 20 I was like I just want to blaze through and I want to get this done today like right now right here I'm not pushing it off we're getting it done March 28th <laughs> this is what's ha what's happening and really I was really nervous because I had a lot of good health days in a row I think mm -hmm. The universe was looking out for me. I just sat down. I did my Bridgerton sprints where I sprint for 30 minutes before an episode and then 15 minutes in the middle of the, ne the episode and I banged it out. It was so funny because I actually got really, really excited when I got it done. I was like, I thought I was just gonna be like, oh, I'm done, I'm ready to relax, you know, take a couple days off. But now I got really excited. I was like, oh my gosh, like the next draft is when I get to make it like feel like a book. And I just got really excited about its potential and everything that I, can do for it and to it. She's a beast though. I thought I wrote down the exact word count. It's 61,900 and like something. Like she's, she's a big girl. And the wild thing is I know I have at least two scenes that I need to add, maybe three. And I haven't even, I pretty much glossed over all of the description like I normally do. 
and drafts want to do. So I have description ads. So she's a big girl, which is funny because everything about Tobe and the Glass Witch have been complete opposites. Like the Glass Witch is skinny, Tobe is thick, the Glass Witch was easy. Tobe is a problem child. I have a lot of thoughts about second book syndrome or working on your second book under contract and I think I could make a whole video on that but there's a lot of pressure I feel like I'm putting on myself no one else is putting on me but I'm putting on myself about having Tobe be well received <laughs> you know when when the glass which isn't even out yet so that's just great why not add even more pressure I also wrote down I had this really fun moment I wanted to share with you where I wrote like a thousand words um, where a group of people were being explained something that I then realized they knew from the beginning and it never needed to be revealed to them because this group of people knew. So yeah, dialogue, description, I actually put description in that scene. All of that had to be deleted and that kind of broke my heart. But that was a couple days ago now so I'm over it and she's done and I'm just thrilled. <laughs> okay, two things before I go. I wanna show you guys the gift that I bought myself for finishing Tobe. I got some new plant babies. I went to go buy one plant baby and of course I ended up with three. I'm gonna show you them after this clip, but I wanted to talk about like what comes next for Tobe. So this week I want to set her aside for just a couple days. I need to work on editing and getting all of the clips situated for this video. And I also wanna write an arc letter for the Glass Witch, just so that when I hand this book out to local teachers and librarians, um, they have a nice little personalized note inside that kind of tells them, thank you so much for reading, let me tell you why this book means the world to me and what I hope it accomplishes and what I hope kids get out of it. Um, also, you know, <laughs> leave me a review on Barnes & Noble, Amazon, or Goodreads. So just little things like that. I wanna uh, get that put together and all print it out and then sign all the arcs I can just sign arcs now, that's so wild. And then start contacting some local schools around me and uh, make some make some friends with some teachers. And then I need to start organizing for draft three of Tobe. This is the one I think I've mentioned where I just make her prettier. I make sure all of the pieces of the plot that I've been messing with in the first two drafts are where they need to go. I always like to focus on plot and character in drafts one and two because like, my personal philosophy on writing is I don't want to spend a bunch of time making lines pretty and like impactful prose if I realize I have a scene out of place and then I just have to delete like what 10,000 words that I worked so painstakingly on especially since I'm a slower writer this is my philosophy I know a lot of people are faster writers and this doesn't affect them as much but for me that would be <laughs> truly devastating like when I was talking about deleting those 4,000 words or what thousand words in chapter 19 that was two days of work for me. So I need to start putting that together. And I think I might make a video for that because I know everyone is always very curious how other authors revise or put things together. So I think I'll make a video on doing that and that'll also keep me accountable for making sure I get on that relatively soon. And then we'll just dive in, dive into draft three. Um, Hopefully that one is clean enough that I can have a few early readers look at it. I know that my agent wanted to read it before I turned it in and I know um, <laughs> my critique partner Jessica is like chomping at the bit to get her hands on this um, because she knows all the little secrets about it so she's, I think she's pretty excited. Which is exciting to know that other people are excited to read it. Okay, let's go see the plants. Okay, so this is my first baby. <gasps> this is Trina. I didn't notice when we got her that she's actually a tree. Like she'll grow like 10 feet tall if you put her outside. Um, I just thought she was like a nice little rubber plant. And I was like, oh, I have a baby rubber plant. Baby rubber plant and rubber plant are different. She's a tree. This is a whole tree. So we named her Trina. I'll let you see some of the variegation right there. Mm. Look at her. And she's got a new little leaf, that little spike right there. That's gonna be a baby leaf. And then the plant that I actually went into the plant shop to buy is this silver pothos queen anne skindapsis pixis <laughs> skindapsis pixis i think is how you say it and she's gonna be a trailing plant so she's just gonna get long long and beautiful and her name is jessica after my critique partner because my critique partner named hers pucket and then last but not least we have to go in another room to show you my last baby and this is like my happiest girl in the whole house look at all of those flowers this is a string of turtles because the little, the little leaves look like turtles. But look at all those flowers. I have never had a plant with that many flowers. That's what those little spiky things are. That's how these guys' 
flowers look. She's so happy. Also, this pot is just like everything. I decided to name her Bridget because like the Celtic goddess of spring. I mean, it just made sense for how fertile <laughs> she is. Also, Echeveria, my fuggler in the background, she loves plants. She highly approves. But thanks for hanging out with me, you guys, as you watched me chaotically finish my book. It was a fun time. Hopefully I made it a little bit less chaotic and a little bit more aesthetic through like fancy chops and <laughs> good vibey music. <laughs> so it didn't actually seem as chaotic to you as it was to me. But you know, it's all bells and whistles, folks. Bells and whistles. Smoke and mirrors. It's all of those things. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys haven't already, The Glass Witch is available for pre-order wherever books are sold. I would love if you would check her out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.